Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look and review, because uh, I've had this for quite a while, of the new Recon 6. Now, I like the Recon stuff. Uh, Dave C has uh, combined with HGLRC to create Recon FPV and are developing some absolutely beautiful frames. This is one of the latest out that's stable. There's the Recon 3, which is the small little baby version that runs on a single 18650. There's the Recon 4, which is a smashing four inch quad. There's the Recon 5, which is the baby brother to this one. And I absolutely love the Recon 5. It is pretty much the one I grab at the moment whenever I'm going to the field. It just flies epically and it just such a beautiful frame and the recon 6 is kind of a riff on that recon 5 layout it's very very similar and at a glance if you hadn't spotted the difference in the arm length and the props uh, you could mistake it easily for a recon 5 but this is using 16 props hence the name recon 6 different motors and it's using the classics to try and get more flight time which is larger props spinning more slowly to produce the thrust you need in a more efficient way to give you a longer flight time so with that in mind let's go through the standard stuff i'll put time codes down below if you're interested and have a look at this thing and see how it differs from the recon 5. So while I unbox this thing, let's go through the specs. So again, this is the Recon 6 LR FPV drone. Uh, it is a 4S version and it is a 6 inch frame. Wheelbase is about 242 millimeters and it will support props up to 6 inches, which is what it comes supplied with. Overall size is about 235 by 178 millimeters. So it's basically the Recon 5 central body with a couple of tweaks we'll see in a moment uh, with longer arms and some additional bracing. The flight controller in the middle is a Zeus F722 mini flight controller that will run on anything from 3 to 6S LiPo uh, with lots of different BEC outputs. The ESC is a Zeus 28 amp uh, BLS 3 to 6S capable 4 in 1 ESC that's underneath. That'll run a steady state current of about 28 amps, a peak current of about 35 amps. Uh, these braces you were going to talk about in a minute. Loads of stuff in here. And then we have the beautiful quad itself. Again, you can see how similar it is in construction to the Recon 5 with the GPS at the back and the buzzer as well. The video transmitter, this is the analog version. So this is the 800 milliwatt uh, Zeus unit at the back. Uh, super long antenna, I'll put that on in a moment. Cadix Rattle 2 FPV camera at the front that performs quite nicely. Uh, Iolus, is that how you say them? 2105.5, 1500 kV motor, and it is running that 6 inch prop. M80 GPS at the back, and it also has the SOTA FPV drone buzzer. The actual props themselves are Gemfan 6026 6 inch props. So I'd definitely get extra ones. Although to be honest, I thought this you can flip and roll this. I'll show you that in a minute. This is really designed as an efficient explorer class quad. Recommended battery is 4S 1500 milliamp hours. Let me just very quickly go through the beta flight setup and show you how all that's done. So we'll click on connect, uh, see something in the data flash. Great, it's been armed and tested for it shipped to me. And in the port, we have the GPS enabled, ESC telemetry, uh, tramp for the Zeus 800 milliwatts VTX at the back. Motor direction is reversed. Be aware of that before you fit your props. D-Shock 600, everything else looks pretty standard. 8K gyro and piddle loop frequencies, but this is an F7 based processor, so it's not even taxing that at all, which means it's going to be relatively future proof. GPS is turned on, and then we've got air mode, OSD, dynamic filtering turned on. And the D-Shop beeper configuration isn't set. We have the beeper at the back. Uh, that makes quite a nice loud noise. The beeper has saved me already a couple of times flying this in longer grass. Battery looks like that. Fail safe is set to GPS rescue. PID tuning, uh, very nice setup on this. It flies really smooth. I'll put a dump and diff links down below if you want to go and have a look at both how it's set up 
from a PID point of view and the rate profiles as well. Although the rate profiles look pretty standard. The modes tab by default looks like this. So there's arming set up on auxiliary one and then some other things as well. Uh, so definitely need to come in here and tweak it to change how you want to work. On screen display is very busy. So lots of things in here. Definitely come in here and move things around, but you definitely see it set up as an explorer with your direction, distance to home, all that jazz. The stuff for all of the video transmitter bits and pieces is set up and it kind of all looks pretty fine just to go through the standard ready to fly setup stuff a little bit of time in the mode a little bit of time in the on-screen display tab and it's, you're going to be ready so let me talk a little bit about what it's like to fly uh, as i said the setup is beautiful it always tends to be with the recon fpv stuff hglrc stuff in general seems to be very good uh, but when dave c is involved with these beautiful designs they seem to uh, give that extra level of polish in terms of the flying though, um, initially I just put the props on and I didn't have the braces on, these pieces at the side. And uh, as you can see from this footage, I was getting quite a lot of jello translated into the camera. Now in terms of the flying itself, it has bags of power, hovering about 25% throttle, flying on a 1300 4S pack, pretty standard pack for a 4S 5-inch uh, quad, getting nearly 10 minutes out of it. So a little bit longer than you'd expect out of a 5-inch quad, thanks to the efficiency of these larger props and these motors. Now, what I did do after that initial flight, I did then fit these braces by the side. There are longer screws in the kit that allow you to screw it in. Uh, that helped an awful lot and re removed a lot of the vibration. I think if you're going to have something like this, uh, you definitely need to, when you're putting it together and putting your props on, balance your props. I know this is a weird suggestion when you're talking about quadcopters, uh, but when I did all my endurance builds, you tend to find as you get longer props uh, with a little bit more mass uh, spinning more slowly then you tend to have to spend a little bit of time uh, balancing them a little bit of tape on the heavy blade will make a huge difference uh, do that before you actually fit them the challenge is is that these uh, motors and props I haven't seen before on a model uh, I'm not a massive fan of them, I'll be honest, of the way the prop connects. I would like a more traditional prop um, connection system. It does mean that they cannot rotate, so you know you cannot get the slip that you sometimes get, but the nut seems incredibly small. So it does make it a little bit more tricky to get in a balancer. But balancer blades and also fit these side struts on here and it will reduce an awful lot of that vibration and it will make a much smoother flight. Because this is a great thing for just taking up and having a good old look around. So again, with this design, it is beautiful. There's an awful lot to like. Uh, it is a bigger version of my favourite. The Recon 5 is one of my go-tos. Uh, and this is a bigger version. There are some slight changes, some tweaks that Dave C has obviously done. Uh, but the layout and the way it works is beautiful. This is how I like to fly FPV. I like to get into an, an area... Uh, and just get in the air and just fly around and just uh, explore and this is perfect for that kind of stuff but then the five is pretty good as well but you don't get quite the same long flight time it is action camera ready uh, we do have the power cable at the top so if you have a skeletonized action camera you can plug that in uh, that would be a great thing to do and the support for an action camera i think it looks like a gopro skeletonized kit um, would kind of go here at the top. GPS and battery backup stuff work very well. Uh, the GPS on this one took a little bit longer than my other recon models, but once that initial lock was done, it was fine. Uh, the beeper is very, very handy. In the UK at the moment, the crops are starting to grow in the fields, and some of the fields, it's uh, particularly with the really nice weather we're having, the grass is getting very long before it gets cut. Uh, this, when it lands in the grass, just disappears. I've found this a couple of times already, uh, getting close using the RSSI trick and then using the beeper to find it. Uh, this is literally worth its weight in gold when, uh, when it comes down because, you know, these models are not inexpensive. Two-bladed props work really nicely with this motor setup on 4S. Uh, tons and tons of power, but very efficient too, giving you longer flight times than you would expect from a 1300 4S battery. And the noise is lower too. Uh, 
uh, and I like that as well. It means that more energy has been used to actually fly rather than alert everybody you're in the area. Sadly, the amount of current that's been pulled from this, I wouldn't trust it with lithium ion pack. Uh, so unfortunately, this probably wouldn't work in that configuration. I've made seven inch models uh, that will run on lithium ion, uh, but there are a couple of more tricks you need to kind of get to lithium ion because when you get the ability to use a lithium ion pack, then you really unlock some seriously long flight times in the 30 40 minute range. There are only a couple of things to be aware of, really. Obviously, the first one is the props are in the image, which is a bit disappointing. It may be mounting the camera slightly more forward would have put it forward at the props, but then you have the issue that in the event of a crash, uh, the camera pod takes the majority of the impact and that just destroys your camera and snaps things. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Um, I would have liked though to have less prop in the image uh, when using an Explorer like this. I know the primary video recording is coming from an action camera anyway, but for those days where you want to drop the action camera and maximize the flight time by reducing the weight, um, it'd just be nice not to have the tips of the blades constantly whirring away in the side of the image. Do watch out for vibration on the model. As I've already said, when you're getting into the bigger props or lower KV motors, you can get vibration and sympathetic vibration on the frame. Uh, do install your braces, do balance your props, and uh, it will fly beautifully. If you don't, potentially you have the chance of getting the kind of vibration that I saw on my first ever test flight without the braces fitted and without some work on the props. I'd also like to see a little bit more thought about how to mount the antennas. I've tried this with Crossfire and at the moment I'm flying it with FreeSky um, receiver. It would be nice if there was some more thought about how to mount an Immortal T antenna or the standard kind of uh, supports here out the back that you would put that in. With things like a long range model, most people are going to be flying it with, with things like Crossfire. If you're having this kind of endurance, you're going to want a little bit more distance. Crossfire is a great option for that. Having some kind of bracket or something in the box, and maybe one of these plastic bits are, uh, but I've got this uh, before it's actually out, so I haven't got a manual as such with it. Maybe one of these is, but it would be nice to have an obvious place on the frame where that would just clip in um, and give you really good antenna alignment so if you are allowed to fly beyond line of sight if it's legal in the place you can do so with the extra flight time you get out of this model you can without losing signal as i mentioned i'm not a fan of the way these props connect onto the motors the shaft itself is really thin and the prop that keeps it on is really small as well. Now I know that the way it kind of works is that the prop itself is part of the reinforcing structure for this thing. I luckily, touch wood, yet haven't landed in a way that's really stressed or you know really uh, smashed one of these motors. Uh, but I would have preferred to have more regular props it allows you to try different props out and also it's easier to get them onto a balancer and it's easier to get hold of them if you are unlucky enough to have a problem but it's quite a cute idea to have the little dimples on top of the motor that lock into the bottom of the prop to make sure that it can't rotate even if the prop isn't complete prop nut isn't completely tight now i would say we are definitely getting into the explorer class with the motors and props and the uh, way everything is laid out. There are a couple of things that I would love to see Recon FPV do. Uh, I've talked about them before and apologies to those of you that watch my reviews a lot. This is going to be something you've heard before. I have fed this back directly uh, to them. First of all is this is again is beta flight. Please, please, please bring out an INAV version with a compass so the return to home actually works and lands the thing rather than just makes it crash closer to you. That would be great. I would like to see some more thought about where the antennas are going to go. For something like the a d digital version of this, it's brilliant because you have the one antenna that does everything that sticks out the back. That's how my Recon 5 is and it works great. It'll be nice to have uh, antenna supports uh, and guides for FreeSky or whatever coming here out the back. I might 3D print some and move these antennas because they're not ideal where they are. They're okay for close in, uh, but at the edge of line of sight, you know, you occasionally get the odd RSSI warning. And also somewhere on the model that you could clip on an Immortal T, some kind of adapter or 3D printable part that would just snap onto the frame. Uh, I really struggle to 
figure out where to put mine as you saw in some of the images that's where I ended up and it worked okay uh, but it would be nice to maybe have a rotating part that would allow you to have uh, a vertical antenna that kind of swung out the way when you landed. It would also be nice as well to have the ability to mount batteries on the bottom uh, with an action camera on the top you don't have a ton of real estate a 1300 1500 4s battery is probably the maximum that you can put on the top it would be nice to have a way to put bigger batteries and mount them on the bottom uh, without having to just try and like wrap the strap around the top deck the bottom isn't particularly flat and that does make that a little bit more complicated so for me, this isn't going to replace my Recon 5. That is still my favourite. Uh, this will give you longer flight times, but there are some other considerations as I've gone through in the kit. Let's hope uh, if they make a Recon 7 or a Recon 8, we get iNav and we get those other things as well. Less props in the image, more thought about the antenna routing for things like Crossfire and also things like FreeSky antennas too. But again, Dave C is making some beautiful, beautiful frames here. Uh, every time I get one of these, it is literally like a work of art. So if you want to fly something that looks a bit different, that looks as beautiful as this, and this is well put together, this is great. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.